two, one. And my foot was just like dangling. Oh, this you crazy mother. Yo! Hey, lady. You don't have OCD. You forgot your spaghetti. You have OBCD. Okay, thank you. I didn't know my psychiatrist was on here. I'm Ashley's Darby. That should be my middle name. Amberlynn Hungry Reed. <laughs> I don't know, I just feel so disconnected. She was like, you're healthy. But you are obese. Hello? Is anyone home? This first one is something I think a lot of us have picked up on over the years. Amber has spoken a lot about being bullied in school, being known as Fat Amber, saying she was the smelly kid and had no friends, but in recent years that story has changed. In school, I was known as Fat Amber. Growing up, I was really, really bullied because of my weight. I didn't have as many friends as the average kid. I didn't go play with people. I was always the fat friend, the ugly friend. I just always felt like Fat Amber, and that's exactly what I was called. I have always been Fat Amber. That's who I was when I was in school. When I was in, um, you know, school, elementary school and middle school and high school, I got made fun of a lot because of my weight. Um, even in college, I mean, I got made fun of a lot in school, honestly. I didn't have as many friends as I could have, all because of my weight. A few friends I did have actually weren't my friends. I was the smelly kid, I was the fat girl. Um, that's how people knew me. I was fat Amber. I was bullied in school and now I'm bullied online. But describing myself as a kid, uh, I wanna say loser. <laughs> I was like a loser, I don't know. So it was lunchtime, I was in ninth grade and i hung out under this like i want to say awning um it was just me my group of friends i want to say there was like 15 of us and there was this other group of people who hated us i honestly got along with everybody in high school random fact i was actually nominated as friendliest or slash nicest in high school it was me and this other girl unfortunately uh i was runner up but the fact that i was even nominated says a lot about what people thought of me the group that hated my group well i wouldn't say my group i wasn't like the head honcho or anything but the group that i hung out with like my friends and stuff for some reason they hated me the most several times throughout the years she admits she didn't care about school would smoke drink and slack off, but when back, or anyone really, called her out on her stupidity, she blames it on her childhood and moving a lot. About school, I never went. I didn't care about school. I'd either miss school or I'd um, just not care. Like, I'd go and I wouldn't do any of the work. Um, I have actually been suspended from school quite a few times. I was a rebellious kid slash teenager. I didn't care. I didn't care about nothing, about nobody, not school, nothing. What were you like as a teen? Long story short, I think that I rebelled because I was in foster care again. And so I started smoking and I started drinking. I either ditched school or didn't care about school. When I was a teenager, I rebelled against everyone and anything that I could get my hands on. I was drinking and smoking all the time. <clears throat> it's not that I... I'm stupid, but I'm not the smartest. I went through a lot in school. Um, I was actually in special ed in high school and middle school. It's not something I like to admit, but it's true. When, when I get taught things, it kind of doesn't absorb in my head like, you know, it would a normal person. Um, what was your favorite school subject? My favorite subject in school, so I'm trying to think childhood, not high school, not middle school. I'm trying to think of elementary school. I really enjoyed writing. I really loved math too. My favorite subject was either English or art. Sometimes it was math. If I like really understood it, I really enjoyed math. I know math. <laughs> don't I? Walking yeah. calculator right here. People don't hate on you for the moon landing. It's difficult to talk about history when you confuse a 16 president with Uncle Sam. <laughs> 
Well, a little backstory about when I was in elementary school. Um, actually, also high school. So elementary school, I was in foster care. So that's a little tidbit. And I jumped, I'd say my whole time in elementary school, I probably went to over 20 elementary schools. The main elementary school I went to there is Miwok Elementary. Um, I did go to La Tresera for a second. Um, the high schools I went to was Casa Grande, but graduated at San Antonio. I had to go to Sonoma Mountain for a minute. Like I said, I was expelled a little bit. There's an Orlando, Kentucky. She's not out there talking about Florida. Oh, are you in Florida? Uh, wait, there's an Orlando, Kentucky? This is why I didn't graduate. So I'd go to one school where I was already taught all the stuff I was learning about. Then I'd go to another school and I'd be learning about something that I don't even know what the heck's happening. So by jumping around school so much, I skipped a lot of school. So, I mean, it's sad, but it is what it is. I was never that great in school. What am I supposed to be doing? Looking for Russia. We'll show them so I can show. Russia is precisely i just want to say i was never taught this okay so you were in school but you weren't listening no this is when i was bouncing around in foster homes geography they didn't teach you geography i missed a lot of school being in foster care um i have some things to learn i'm not gonna admit but i mean i'm not gonna lie but i know where rush is um it's the top right where? I think what? Where? The top right! Point to it. <laughs> I think just like also going to college, um, I didn't complete it because I moved. If I wouldn't have moved, I would have completed it, of course. I didn't stop going because I disliked it or whatever it may be. I actually thoroughly enjoyed college. Um, it's just I moved across the country and whatever it may be. Did you go to school for criminal justice? I did. I did, I did, I did. And I regret it. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Don't let anyone ever force you into going to college. We've always heard Amber talking about how poor she and her family were growing up. She's talked about having only one pair of pants, wearing the same clothes every day, and any money coming in would be spent on, a uh, well you know. But did you know our girl has a very particular palate and refused to drink anything other than Fiji water? As I was editing this, I realized I went a little more in depth with the subject in my Amberlin's Biggest Laws Part 4, so go ahead and check that video out for even more contradictions. And I was very poor. I had no money. Like, I'm telling you, I wore the same pair of pants and sweater every single day going to school. My mom shared stories with Becky. I was the poorest kid at school, like, hands down. Like, hands down, you saw me and you knew the. Okay, that's the poor kid. I lived in a trailer that was falling apart with mold and holes. My grandma was cremated and um, we were poor, so she didn't get this like beautiful urn. It was like this box, uh, this plastic box and- Fiji? In high school, Fiji was the only water I would drink. I wouldn't drink any other water, no tap water, no water from restaurants. No other bottled water, only Fiji. It was so weird. The first diet I was actually ever on was when I was 11 years old. I weighed 290 pounds and I was in foster care at the time. And my social worker literally said to me, I will pay for you to do Weight Watchers if you just do it and stick with it. So I did it and I stuck with it. And I lost about two pounds a week. I was only there for a month. I know that's pathetic. I rebelled even at a young age thinking I didn't need to do it. Even though I was 290 pounds at the age of 11, that's kind of scary. The lowest weight I ever remember weighing is 290 pounds and that was at the age of 11. When I was 16, I weighed 420 pounds. As a child, I was on a soccer team. I was on a softball team. I was in a dance group. I would rollerblade, roller skate, swim, ride my bike, the whole nine yards. Like I was always outside. I was always moving. I was always having fun. I was very, I don't want to say athletic, but I kind of was. 
What happened the last time you inflicted pain during sex? Becky and I really aren't into like pain. Don't have an answer. I mean, I get, I, my jaw hurts when, you know. Says the woman who hasn't had sex in three years. <laughs> I haven't had sex in three hours. Oh. They're probably talking about me. Oh. I haven't had sex in three years. That's not true. We did it one time in here. Yeah. <laughs> but then before that, like. What happened on your best hookup ever? See, this is awkward. Because it's like, I want to say something with Becky. But then it's like, does Becky want our tea out there like that? So without going into too much detail, I'm just going to say, you know, the first time me and Becky um had our, you know, relations. One, two, three. Last time me and Becky had was we were here in this apartment. It was one time. I love you, um, Becky, no offense, but I feel like you can eat the kitty cat like a champ. You're probably right. I ain't saying nothing. You don't even know. Oh, wait, she just told the tea. And I did. Amber claims to have gotten permission from both of her parents to talk about them on her channel from day one, even though she didn't have a relationship with them back then and they were not around. Regardless, I don't think her family would be too happy to see the things she has chosen to disclose to her audience about them throughout the years. So even when I first started my YouTube channel, I asked both my parents, like, how do you feel about me sharing, you know, things about foster care or things that, you know, you guys have done that has affected me and something they both always have said, which I have always found so like, just, I just feel very thankful for it is like, it's your story too, Amberlynn. Like, so it's not just our story, it's also yours. And I think that's why like, I have been okay with sharing certain things about my parents or my past. Or like, you know, my mom's record. Like that's not something actually I would have ever brought up. I would have never like brought up my mom's record ever. Um, and the only reason why I did is because of this whole thing that's happened. What baby? I did it. I know where she's at. I found the actual, but she's at right now. Are you serious? Yes. Okay, so the predicament is my mom's in prison. I haven't known what prison or anything like that. That's a whole other long story. I searched all of Oklahoma. When I was just searching Oklahoma City and Oklahoma County, she wasn't on there. Oh my God. And like, I've been trying to search online where she's at and stuff like that. And I just haven't been able to find it. And Destiny's been like on the prowl. It really shows. She's smiling in the mugshot. Let anyway. me see. Let me see. Oh, there's six more pictures of her. Oh my god. Let's enjoy a hot meal over your mother's mugshot, like online. Like that's cute. What's my mom's name? Christy. What's my dad's name? <laughs> George. <clears throat> Christine Smith said. Oh my god. Oh, it says Christy Smith. I thought it said Christine Smith because that's actually my mom's name. Anyways, my mom is in prison. Um, I don't know what's going on with my dad. Truly, I don't, we don't talk. My mom has been a drug addict for years. I was born on drugs. Oh, can't talk. I was born on drugs. So we know my mom did drugs even before I was born. My mom did some crazy stuff in Oklahoma. My aunt, still to this day is there for my mom. She writes my mom in prison. She visits my mom. She calls my mom. This is TMI. This is probably not something I should say, but my aunt used to have a addiction and she beat it. My aunt also was extremely overweight. There is a rumor going around that my mom went to prison for five years. I am telling you right now that never happened you have the wrong person. My mom has never been to prison for five years, period. Oh, and by the way, I told you guys about my mom, how she's gonna be in prison for five years and 26 days. They actually said she's gonna serve the first year in jail. So I'm gonna start writing her, copy it, put it in the binder. And then when my mom writes me back, I'm gonna copy it and then put it in the binder. And then in five years and 26 days, I'm actually gonna send it to her. And I
I don't usually get drinks when I order from Uber. I mean, I have before, it has happened, but it's not really something I do. It kind of just like gives me the creeps a little bit. Um, I'm actually ordering my next meal. I wanna let you guys know I'm having KFC. Hopefully my order is correct. <laughs> Sometimes I get so scared like when I order a diet soda, like they're gonna give me regular. Um, I'm just looking at my Uber Eats. My order is one minute away. Got my food. There is literally no ice. Let me see, is it diet? I am eating the first thing that I will be eating today and that is literally just a diet soda. And I'll even post a screenshot here of my order because this is literally all I ordered. Jesus Christ. I got Diet Coke. I spent $15 for this. And while I was eating, I ordered a drink from Chick-fil-A. I got a Diet Coke. Ugh. I got a freaking slushy therapy. This is the one from McDonald's. It's like a blue raspberry moment. So I just ordered this uh, raspberry, or not raspberry, is it blue raspberry? I ordered this from McDonald's and I also got a Diet Coke. Tomorrow, me and Feline are starting a no takeout challenge. So right now we're just playing Uno and we ordered a slushie from McDonald's. Uh, this is the blue raspberry, I think. Mm -hmm. 